This is episode two of the Michael Catherine Apocryphon by Ritz Vernado, Jeffrey Richard Vernado. This is the second edition here of this ongoing audio and video series, uh, which is an audio book, a video book, if you will. Characteristics of the relationship Michael and Catherine had included an almost obsessive concern on Michael's part about Catherine's whereabouts and well-being. This was matched in equal intensity by an almost deliberate willfulness and independence on Catherine's part to go wherever she pleased without even informing Michael or the children at times. Michael thus became very upset and agitated whenever she was gone, very worried about where she was and whether or not she was safe and when she would be back. Michael once stated quite accurately, Catherine does what Catherine wants. Catherine had been in Kentucky during the six weeks prior to the murder-suicide and had returned uh, simply to get her stuff. She was planning on going back to Kentucky to stay with her sister. And of course Michael shot her in her sleep uh, the next day. During that six weeks prior to the murder-suicide, Michael himself had been in Dallas and had just come back uh, to the house there in Novice a few days before Catherine's arrival. Michael had been staying in a YMCA room uh, in Dallas and uh, $200 had been stolen from Michael's YMCA room uh, when Catherine's mother Frances had picked Michael up in Dallas and they were on their way back to Paris. They had stopped at the Stuckey's to eat a hamburger and they sat down and were talking and tears rolled down Michael's face and he said, I have sunk so low. Michael said he had taken 25 quaaludes to try to leave this reality, to try to end it all. Uh, and apparently he survived that attempt. Uh, there are interesting aspects uh, to the murder-suicide. There are pieces of the puzzle of the deaths of Michael and Catherine. Uh, in Vietnam uh, and afterwards, uh, Michael had had a friend named George and George had disappeared in the Bahamas and this is talked about at one of the discussion groups and in fact that will be another episode. Uh, Michael did not know what happened to George. There was never a body found uh, and uh, that, that's an interesting mystery in and of itself. Michael said that there was a death pattern. Uh, he talked about his first wife and uh, child being killed uh, in an accident involving a drunk driver in Fort Worth in 1962. I'll also talk about that incident. Uh, I'll elaborate on that incident more in a future uh, episode. Uh, there was a, a time several months before the murder-suicide when Catherine had felt physically threatened by forces. Uh, Several people in the discussion group had had some incidents occur during a, a certain certain weekend. There was a point at which Michael asked one of the discussion group members to buy him a gun. That person, of course, refused. Michael had talked about suicide to Francis, Catherine's mother. At one point during one of the discussion groups, and I have this on audio cassette tape and I will be presenting it during one of the episodes Michael said suicide picking up a gun and shooting yourself death as I understand it is pure escapism Michael went on to say to a certain extent we are all gonna die by our own hand and then Michael had said my death is gonna be different to anybody else's whether or not I know what it is is just for me now those three statements were made during the same discussion group meeting uh, September 16th of uh, 1980. They precede the murder-suicide by almost exactly one year. So there was suicidal ideation in, in uh, Michael's mind uh, up to a year prior to the event. Uh, Michael carried no driver's license, had no checking account, and no ID. At one point, Michael had been diagnosed as manic depressive by a psychologist. There was a woman named Carol Nelson uh, who had studied some occult and metaphysical things with Michael, and she died mysteriously. Uh, was either considered a suicide or a 
perhaps natural causes, but there was an investigation into her death. Father Jensen had also visited and talked with Carol Nelson, and so had uh, Bob Guffey. And, of course, Father Jensen and Bob Guffey were both people who attended the discussion group, the weekly discussion group uh, that Michael founded. The investigation into Michael and Catherine's uh, murder-suicide lasted for three months. Michael could be jealous, possessive, and, and got very angry from time to time. He realized Catherine was leaving him permanently to go back to Kentucky. This could have been the, the triggering incident uh, that caused uh, him to kill her and then himself. Uh, Frances, Catherine's mother, had a dream about Catherine shortly after the incident, and at one point she felt that Catherine had communicated with her shortly after the incident. Father Jensen reported Michael appearing to him after Michael's death with the message, tell the people, I was deceived, Satan is real. Now this appearance to Father Jensen allegedly occurred during the same time that uh, prior to Michael's funeral when Michael's body was uh, at the funeral home. Francis, uh, Catherine's mother Francis, uh, in visiting Michael's grave, felt a heaviness, and a, a heaviness and a sorrow over Michael's grave. Here's uh, more quotes uh, from Michael. Basically, I am not a community person. What I have is mine. What I do is mine. The way I look, the way I look at death, if it was tomorrow morning, I'd go to sleep and I'd be ready. Some people can experience their own death in the here and now. In another uh, quote, he says, I know why I'm here and it's for a good reason. To help where I can, to give something, to enlighten somebody. Uh, Catherine's mother, Frances, uh, after uh, Michael's suicide, uh, encountered his father and Michael's father made the remark, I didn't think he had the guts. Francis uh, got upset with him for saying that about his son. Francis went on to say, That weekend before Kathy got back and the murder-suicide occurred, something told me I should get those rifles, they were Kathy's, out of the house. Michael told me he hadn't slept for three days. I could tell he was completely out of it. He seemed to be under the influence of some drugs and it scared me. I believe he had been planning what he did up to a year earlier. Kathy never believed that he would actually harm her. Michael asked me for Kathy's tape recorder, which is, was at my house at the time. I'm sure he was planning to leave a taped suicide message, but I never brought him the recorder. And I think that uh, will, for the time being, uh, wrap up this second edition, uh, the second chapter in the Michael Catherine Apocryphon. Uh, this has been Rich Vernado, Jeffrey Richard Vernado. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for listening. Remember to hear the rest of the series, uh, and there will be a number, uh, obviously a large number of episodes after this one, because there's a great deal of material here that we're dealing with. Thank you very much.